seen them. And uh, what recollections do you have of the fight between Tiger and Dipolo, including the first knockdown by Dipolo of Tiger, and uh, what happened as Tiger rose from the canvas? To this day, it's one of the most exciting fights I have ever seen. And I understand that ESPN has this fight. That's what I heard, that it is in their archives. And I have begged them to transfer it, regardless of the expense, so the fans could see this again. It was voted 1968 Ring Magazine Fight of the Year. I was in the Essex County Police Academy attending. And I went with another police officer by the name of Earl Johnson from East Orange. And we went to the garden. I had gotten the tickets the day that they went on sale. And I got first row. It's hard. I think that the TV side was sold out, or they give them away to, uh, you know, as political favors or wh whoever they give them to, the high rollers. But I got my first row ringside. And Teddy Brenner made this fight because of the popularity of the Paula. And he had a following, and they'd bring in, uh, you know, topless girls uh, wearing their tops at ringside, screaming for Frankie from Jersey City. And Tiger was the tried and true professional that was going to uh, provide this shootout. And Dick was five foot eight. And even when he took the title from Torres, he came in, I think, 167, somewhere around there, always under 170. Now, Frankie, I knew could get up to like 185, 190 pounds. When he came in the ring that night, I could not imagine in my wildest dreams what was going to happen. I sat there as a man and had boxed with both of them. And when Frankie got in the ring, the, my memory of the fight is that he looked so big, they announced his weight at something like 170 something. He looked to be 185 pounds. And if you look at the pictures, his thighs are tremendous, and his arms are so heavy, and the breadth of his chest. I mean, he, he looks like a heavyweight. And Tiger, unbeknownst to any of us, I believe had the onset of liver cancer. Um, diagnosed later, but still the possibility that he was sick then. And it was still Dick Tiger. And when they made the fight, it, it, all the boxing aficionados went crazy. So we're waiting and waiting, and we went through the preliminaries, and they come down the aisle, and they get in the ring. And as I said, in my wildest dreams, I don't know what's going to happen. They come out. I believe, this is my memory. I could be wrong. They had a, uh, a fairly even first round. And then in just stalking and eyeballing each other. In the second round, Tiger came in with his hands like this, looking up over his gloves, and DePaula dropped a left hand and a right hand, like that, yap, yap. And it hit Tiger square in the middle of his face. And the sound of it was akin to Larry Holmes being hit by Mike Tyson, that over-the-top exploding punch that hit him on top of the head, and the resounding smash of the two punches, the leather exploding. Before Tiger instantaneously reacted by going down, I knew he was going to go down from that. He walked into a Mack truck, and it hit him. He went off of his feet, and the picture shows him with his feet up in the air. But there's no picture that shows what happened on the way down. And in my mind's eye, if you froze the frame, he would be in the air like Razor Ruddock was when Lennox Lewis hit him. He was in the air, suspended, and my heart leapt into my throat for him. And I was more friends with Tiger than Frankie. And when he went down, he landed so hard, I believe that it snapped him back into consciousness. I think the punch might have rendered him unconscious for a second or two. And when he landed, his mighty warrior's heart made him get up. And you see this in the Bob Foster fight, too. You see him struggling to get up. He wants to get up to fight. 
he got up and the man aged before my eyes and I thought it was Vaseline on the side of his head and it looked like gray hair <laughs> appeared instantaneously at his temples. It was like the picture of Dorian Gray. He got, I, I, I've never seen anything like it except Liston aging in his corner after the uh, head whipping he got from Muhammad Ali. And, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> people were screaming so loud. They were shocked that a club fighter could do this to such a champion. He got up and came right after Frankie and backed him up into the ropes, blasting him with body shots. And as the fight wore on, they exchanged, he, he got DePaula on the deck. And DePaula was losing heart, second by second. They made it through that round. And I think in the next round, or, or the one after that, Tiger was knocked down again with the same combination. Got up and just tore after him again. And this time, when the Paula went down, he was a changed man. The body shots were killing him. And somehow he made it to the 10th and final round where Tiger won the decision. But you could not hear the person sitting next to you. The, my friend was trying to speak to me, ask me questions, and the screaming was so loud in the fight, they couldn't believe Frankie had done this to the great Dick Tiger. But uh, I had run up to the ring apron, screaming, get up, you hate to get up, because everyone was screaming. And when I said his name, that not too many people knew, I did it on purpose, you hate to get up, like that. I think he heard me, but he got up and went after him. And then the guard security pushed me back. But I was more excited than an Ali Frazier for that one. It's one of the all-time showstoppers for me. I think of it all the time. I'd give anything to see the...